So about six years ago, our two families were friends and had young children at home. And so we were looking for a way to volunteer without having to find a babysitter for them. And so we contacted Catholic Charities to learn about their refugee adoption program. Sponsorship. Yeah, sponsorship like program. Yeah. So it took us a few years to get going, but when we did, we were matched with a Sudanese lady. Step by step, mm -hmm. we never intended to do anything mm -hmm. but just interact with this one lady. Mm -hmm. But as we met more of her friends and got involved in her community, it was just one thing after another. Molly would say, wouldn't it be cool <laughs> if, and I would go, oh gosh, we're about to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> We had a really eye-opening experience. We went out, just the two of us, after school one day, and we were painting fingernails. I think these little girls came out, and we were painting their fingernails. It was a beautiful week, and so we just said, hey, have y'all been out here like playing outside all week? It's been a really beautiful week, and they kind of looked at us, they were like, no. And we're like, why not? And they said, well, we're not allowed to come outside unless you're here. And we were just blown away. You know, we think of our kids just going outside to play, and they don't have that experience, and so, Kind of the weight of it fell on us there that we have a really big, you know, responsibility. So when they, those little girls told us that, we were like, okay. <laughs> we 100% believe in overseas missions. It's so important. Mm -hmm. It's vital. It's biblical. But we also have this opportunity for about maybe a hundred bucks for a play date to go and share the gospel with. Like 150 kids. The Samaritan knelt down. He bandaged the man's wounds and put oil on cuts and bruises. And he gave him an You would help out? We've just seen, you know, the things that the Lord has wanted us to do. He's really blessed and paved the way for. And then we've, the other times we've fallen on our faces and repented and gotten back up. <laughs> Something else. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point we do play dates almost every month. It's just organized chaos. This! I made this! this. Oh. I made this! Oh. Is this we usually have some, some type of thing planned, whether it's crafts or specific games, and then we usually have some snacks because kids like snacks and kids will come just for snacks. <laughs> There's this group of moms that come out and they're just as excited to come out as their kids are because they don't get out of their houses a lot, depending on what their background is. That's one of my favorite little areas when all the babies are playing and the, there's this group of moms sitting there just talking and talking and talking. <laughs> what do you want the takeaway to be? I don't want it to be a coat. I don't want it to be a Christmas gift. I don't want it to be a fun thing. I want them to meet Jesus. One play date, my mother-in-law came, she's mm -hmm. a sweet lady, mm -hmm. and it was one of the first ones, so the kids were still like, who are you, why are you here, you know, still a little bit like, what's going on, because I think they'd been used to a lot of drive-bys, yeah. yeah. they'd been used to people like coming like one time, shoving stuff at them, and then being like, okay, bye, mm -hmm. you know, and so anyway, this little girl was like, why are you here, to my mother-in-law, I said, why are you here, and my mother-in-law was like, because I love you. And the little girl's like, but why do you love me? And she's like, because Jesus loves you. And I was like, that's, that's the takeaway. <laughs> you know, like I wish every little kid would ask, you know, because we want everything we do to point them to, mm -hmm. to a deeper love. We can't give it, mm -hmm. we certainly can't give it fully, mm -hmm. but we want to introduce them to the person that can.